Uh, I enjoyed basic. Um, kind of that whole military lifestyle, I enjoyed it. Uh, my first duty station was Fort Lewis, Washington, now Joint Base Lewis McCord. Um, got, I started off as going in as a mechanic, but I was playing football one day out there with a couple of guys, and me being a bigger guy, I'm actually naturally fast. And an NCO who happened to be a sniper for the Army picked me up and pulled me for a PSD, which is Personal Security Defense for General Ordinero. Um, he's actually still good friends of mine. He even got me LASIKs through the military. I used to wear glasses. So I stayed with PSD for the longest time until about 2011 I went to Korea. I went to Iraq during that time and then came out from Iraq, stayed in Fort Lewis for about maybe five months and shipped off to Korea. Yes, sir. Um, kind of did gunner in a MRAP. Um, had seen some things over there. Um, got hit a couple times. Uh, got hit by an IED, but um, nothing, nothing really major. That I call major, I guess. <laughs> They're interesting. I actually learned a lot through working with the IAs, the Iraqi Army. Um, uh, being that I was in the military, I actually got to expose to a lot of different religions, a lot of different backgrounds, and I found it fascinating. Actually, started talking to some of the guys over there, learning some of their language, learning some of their customs and, and stuff. A uh, very interesting uh, community, I guess you could say. You never really adjust to civilian life. You just kind of trying to find the best word, tolerate it more. Because once you're so, it, it, you have a different mindset. And same thing with being law enforcement. We have different mindsets than normal people, and, and there's things that we do that are different. Um, you just kind of blend back into your society, I guess. Um, Basically, your support groups, like my friends uh, from the military, we kind of hung around each other and we helped each other ease back into it. One of my good friends, Daniel Adams, I still talk to this day, Michael Relay, um, those two guys, one's in Arizona, the other one's in Oregon, we, we stuck to each other like glue in Iraq and outside of Iraq and still to this day. Well, uh, I, I like serving my community. and. It was also a dare from one of my friends that he said, he told me he was like you couldn't make it through Bailey T because I you know I couldn't make it through Bailey T. Well, I'm very hard headed I guess. If you tell me I can't do something, I'm gonna prove you wrong, and I proved him wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. And being that Northampton County, I grew up in Northampton County. That is my home. That's my family. I naturally wanted to go to Northampton County Sheriff's Office. The law enforcement and military community actually coincide with our uniform and appearances, our traditions, um, our rank structure. So I, it, it, it's a natural fit for military vets to go into law enforcement. I mean, it's almost the same. We have to be clean shaven. We have to have our uniforms natural, you know, dress right dress. It's just a natural fit for us. So um, basically everything from the military mindset, the, the discipline, just that brought in right in with uh, law enforcement and that and myself and Sergeant Johnson we were, we were trained by the military to look at different things like people react and stuff like that. Being on a PSD everybody's going to come up and shake the general's hand. You got to pick out all right, who's got ill intentions and who doesn't and that was one of the classes we went through was figuring out facial expressions, people's movements and patterns and stuff. That, and if we have experiences with those religious backgrounds, we can talk to them, we can get a little bit further with the person knowing that there, it's not just some guy that, you know, from law enforcement, you know, security police, they actually, we can connect with them on a more personal level. And that has actually helped me out a lot. Also, another thing that helps me out is that the fact I grew up here, a lot of people know me. We're more understanding, I guess, of cultural differences. I say at least go to the reserves. It, it may not be for you, but it can help further your life. 
given the fact that I'm a veteran and the VA is out there, the VA helps a lot with giving us schooling, giving us training to get jobs. It, it's a good way to start your, your life off. You either go to college or go off to the military, the milita and either or, you can always go back to the military, you can always go back to college. I mean, it's a great way to start. Oh yes, the VA has helped me a lot. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the K-9, for instance, the, the VA, I, I, I don't know how they can get more information out to the veterans, but I, I never knew about it, never even heard about it. And some of the people that I called the VA it, in higher levels didn't even know about it, about getting the canine services. But come to find out it's true. I have actual proof sitting at the house. <laughs> Got a four-legged proof. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that the VA has out as opportunities for us. No, I just kind of, the movies somewhat are real about when you go to basic training about someone yelling at your face and stuff. So, I mean, it wasn't really much of a shock when I was standing there in basic training and people were yelling at me. I was like, okay, I knew this was coming. All right, let's just do this. But it, the, the one thing that does stand out is the camaraderie that we have that we, we will pull together. No matter the color, no matter the religious background, we're all here. We're Americans. We're, we're here in one unit and we're going to fight together. Same thing with law enforcement. We're here together. Greatest friends of mine uh, I work with still at the Sheriff's Office. I love them to death. We, we pull together. So.